All right, so what I'm going to do in this video is find sine, cosine, tangent of angles using the unit circle. So before I jump into this, this is the unit circle. Uh, it's used to help us find sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, cotangent of a wide range of common angles that we will see whether they're in degrees or radians. Now I've talked about in class how to construct one of these uh, for an Algebra 2 class is what I'm using this for. Uh, we won't go into all that now. I'm just going to show you how to use it. But in class I have shown how to construct this. I'm sure you can find on YouTube other videos out there on how to construct it if you so desire. The important thing that you need to know from this is what we care about is the coordinates of these endpoints all the way around. And each of these coordinates, of course, is an XY coordinate. Now, why these are important is uh, we kind of looked at and discovered that the X coordinate is going to coincide with cosine, and the Y coordinate is going to coincide with sine. So X is cosine, Y is sine. Using that, we can answer a whole bunch of questions as far as sine, cosine, and tangent of many different angles. So let's start. I have sine of pi, sine of pi divided by 3. So what I'm going to do first is figure out where in the world is this angle at. Sine of pi divided by 3. So if I go to my unit circle, we're dealing with radians. Sine of pi over 3. So we're dealing with pi over 3 here. So we're using these coordinates here. So since I'm dealing with sine, I want the y coordinate, the second of the two. So I get square root of three over two. So our answer here is just square root of three divided by two. And that's it. That's all you gotta do. So locating the angle is pretty much the key thing there first, and then just figuring out what from the coordinate do you need, cosine, sine, whatever. So our next one, we have sine of negative 60 degrees. So we're dealing with a negative angle measure here. So remember when we're talking about angles in standard position, uh, positive angles go counterclockwise, uh, negative angle measures go clockwise. So I'm going to talk to you about a few ways that you could kind of figure out where in the world is negative 60 degrees. So what I can do one way is think about, well, if I want to be negative 6 degrees, I'm somewhere down here. If I add just 360 degrees, you know, taking you back this way, that should keep me at the same spot. So if you take negative 60 and add 360 degrees, remember 360 degrees is a full revolution in a circle, that should take you back to this angle. But if you add them together, it's going to give you the positive angle measure. Since this unit circle all deals with positive radians, positive degrees. It might be easier to think of it positive. So 300 degrees is right here. So I'll be dealing with this point. Another way you could think about how to find negative 60 degrees is think of positive 60 degrees. So if I measured positive 60 degrees, I go, so one, two, three out. Or you could just look and see, all right, we're going about this far out, which so starting here, going that same distance, that'd be coming down one, two, three, again, right down here. So you could kind of measure, oh, how far am I going? And then just measure that distance the opposite way, clockwise. Uh, one final way you can measure is think of the positive angle measure. So if we're dealing with negative six degrees, let's start with positive six degrees and just find the point that is reflected across the x-axis. It's going to match up that way. So we're up here at 60 and I reflect back down. I'm down here. This would be negative 60 degrees. Okay, so those are three different ways you could do that. Uh, one of them, you know, a little bit more mathematical approach. Uh, and then just other ways you can help arrive at where you need to be. So side of negative 60 degrees, we're going to be down here. And if I want sine of negative 60 degrees, I want the y coordinate, which is negative square root of 3 over 2. So sine of negative 60 degrees, negative square root of 3 over 2. Easy enough. So now let's move to cosine. So cosine of 150 degrees. So I'm going to find where 150 degrees is at. So I'm looking, we're over here. 
And since I want cosine, we're now going to look at the x coordinate. So over here, cosine of 150 degrees is negative square root of 3 over 2. So as he does it, negative square root of 3 over 2. Finally, we have cosine of negative pi over 3. So if I think about the positive angle measure, that would be up here. So it went 1, 2, third one out. So 1, 2, third one out. Or you could think of, well, here's positive pi over 3. Reflect it down. This will be negative pi over 3. So it looks like we're doing cosine of really 300 degrees or 5 pi over 3. Cosine, again, is the x-coordinate, so cosine of negative 5 pi over 3 is 1 half. So those are sine and cosine, some positives and negative degrees and radians there. Now let's deal with tangent. Now the key you need with tangent is you need to think of uh, a trig identity that's going to help us through that. When you have tangent of theta, that is the same as sine of theta divided by cosine of theta. So this first one where they want tangent of pi, really we're going to figure out sine of pi divided by cosine of pi. So over here with tangent of 120, again we're going to find sine of 120 degrees divided by cosine of 120 degrees. So if you're able to easily pick up sine and cosine, Tangent really isn't that much of a step up. It's still finding sine and cosine. You just have to find two things instead of just one. So let's figure out sine of pi and cosine of pi. So referencing my unit circle, uh, we've got to find our angle where we're at. So pi is over here. I need sine of pi and cosine of pi. So sine is, again, the y-coordinate, which is 0. So sine is 0. And cosine of pi would be the x coordinate, which is negative 1. So I'm going to have 0 divided by negative 1. Now if you divide those out, 0 divided by negative 1, you're just going to get 0. So tangent of pi is 0. Easy enough. Finally, wrap up our last example here. Sine of 120 divided by cosine of uh, 120. So let's figure out where that 120 is. So we're dealing with this angle up here. 120 degrees. Uh, sine is square root of 3 over 2. Cosine would be negative 1 over 2. So filling those in, we said square root of 3 over 2 divided by negative 1 over 2. Now we've talked about the uh, relationship on how this simplifies and breaks down mathematically. Um, and, you know, we've done enough of it in class that we've noticed, you know, these 2s, both in the denominator there, of those fractions, those are going to cancel out or divide to 1. So we're left with square root of 3 divided by negative 1. Now what's going to happen there is when you divide by 1, that's not going to change anything. So really you just get that square root of 3. And since we have a positive divided by a negative, it's going to be negative square root of 3. And that was finding sine, cosine, and tangent of angles using the unit circle uh, in my next video. I'll look at cosecant, secant, and cotangent.